Welcome and thank you all for joining us tonight. My name is Katrina Hartsock and I'm the Director of Education at Regina Chile Academy. This event is for all Regina Chile families to learn more about the classic learning test lower grade assessments, which Regina Chile will use as our national standardized test in grades three through 12 beginning next year. You've likely heard the name classic learning test or more commonly the CLT in reference to their popular and highly respected CLT college entrance exams. These exams are classical and include passages from the greatest thinkers of our Western heritage. But tonight, Chelsea Nemec is here to tell us about the lower grade assessments for our Regina Chile third through eighth graders. If you have questions during this webinar, uh, please go ahead and put them in the chat and then Chelsea will address them at the end of our talk. Also, all of the microphones are off, but please feel free to put the questions in the chat. Mrs. Chelsea Nemec is the Director of Catholic School Partnerships for the Classic Learning Test. Chelsea will tell us more about the content of the lower grade assessments and how they align with our classical and Catholic model at Regina Chile Academy. So now I will hand it over to Chelsea. Thank you, Chelsea, for joining us. Thank you, Katrina, and welcome. I, I love seeing um, all of these lovely faces here on the screen. Um, so, um, like Katrina mentioned, my name is Chelsea Nemec, and I am the Director of Catholic School Partnerships here at the Classic Learning Test. Uh, I am also a graduate student at the University of Dallas studying classical education. Uh, and also, I, um, you know, I have a, a fond love for Regina Chaley. Many of my friends um, are homeschooling uh, families, and uh, me and my husband are friends with many homeschooling families that homeschool um, and have their children at Regina Chaley centers. So, um, yeah, so I'm just delighted to, to be with all of you. Uh, and share a little bit about uh, CLT and uh, do a little bit of a get to know, get to know CLT for, for all of you. So I will share my presentation here. Okay. Wonderful. So um, this is our second webinar. If you haven't watched the first, um, I definitely recommend it. I did go in, uh, into a bit of depth about the history of CLT, how we started, um, and more. Um, so I'm not going to go as deep in this webinar on those topics, but would definitely recommend you checking out um, that webinar. It'll give you a little bit of extra information. I also, in that first webinar, went over the CLT 8, CLT 10, and CLT in greater depth and detail. So if you're interested about the older grades, um, if you have students that are a little bit older and you'd like to learn more about that, definitely go check out that first webinar. It should be available on the Regina, Regina Chaley uh, YouTube uh, channel. Um, but for this one, we are going to talk more about our CLT three through six assessments that we are piloting this May. Regina Chaley is partnering with us for that and is um, piloting um, this May as well. Um, so first I wanna just uh, acquaint you if you hadn't watched the first webinar, just acquaint you with our mission. CLT exists to reconnect to knowledge and virtue by providing meaningful assessments and connections for seekers of truth, goodness, and beauty. Um, and, and this mission um, has evolved over time. This year, we added the connections piece because a lot of what CLT has, uh, the, the role that CLT has played in the classical renewal movement has sort of been a connector. There's a lot of different, a um, lot of different types of schools, a lot of different um, uh, people, families, perspectives in the classical re renewal movement, but CLT has sort of been this connecting piece because we're bringing all these different people together around the great books um, of our Western tradition. And, and that's something that I'm really proud of um, that CLT has been able to do. Um, and of course, seekers of truth, goodness, and beauty. And all of us here um, are seekers of truth, goodness, and beauty. And we want our uh, students and our children to be um, seekers of these transcendental qualities as well. So one of the things uh, in my role as the director of Catholic school partnerships, one of the things I really want to emphasize is 
how examinations, how assessments can play a healthy role in the life of a Catholic school specifically. And one of the things that the Protestants don't really have, and also, um, you know, the charter schools or public schools, of course, don't have, um, is, is the Catholic, the rich Catholic intellectual tradition that we have um, in, in the church. And so one of the pieces of that tradition is the examination of conscience. Um, and I and the way that we look at examinations at CLT, the way we encourage our schools to look at examinations is similar to the way that we already as Catholics view exa the examination of conscience in our spiritual life. Uh, you know, so in the spiritual life, we use the examination of conscience as an objective reflection on on our spiritual life, on our choices, on our relationship with God. Um, and we go through this set of questions, you know, at the end of the day or before confession, and we use that to sort of reflect. Um, it's not the only tool in our spiritual toolbox. It's not the end all be all um, of our entire spiritual life. And we don't we don't do our examination just to check the boxes. Um, right. Because if we did, then that would obviously indicate that there's, you know, a little bit of something that we might need to adjust. Um, in our spiritual life, but it's a really good tool for us to reflect and to make the necessary adjustments that are needed so that our spiritual life is strong and healthy um, and vibrant. And in the same way, that is how we want our schools and our families that work with us to view examinations. Examinations are not, uh, we don't want teachers to teach the to the test. We don't want education to be for the purpose of the test. We want the test to support the good work that's already being done in the school. And we want it to be a, a reflection, um, you know, an objective reflection of a student's intellectual life. Um, something that's really natural, something that's really, um, you know, not anxiety provoking, um, something that's holistic. Uh, and, and it's only one tool in the toolbox of a school when they're looking at a student. Um, and so that we don't want to be the main um, the main indicator of a student um, of the way a school views their students um, in the same way that we don't want you know the examination of conscience in the spiritual life isn't isn't the only tool in the toolbox. Um, so I just want to kind of put that that piece together um, as we go through the rest of this presentation um, to sort of think about the way that CLT approaches assessments uh, as a little bit more of a holistic perspective. Um, and, and something that can be really easily and organically integrated into the life of the school, um, as opposed to sort of interrupting the life of the school um, and, and sort of dominating the life of the school. So just to touch on the other suite of assessments that we currently have, um, just in case you didn't see the first webinar, I do wanna make sure that, that you know um, the, all of what CLT's uh, doing, um, you know, so we have three assessments currently that schools are are using and have been using um, since we have started. So we have the CLT-8, which is, the, it is a formative and summative assessment. So what that means is that it can be used as a formative assessment if you want, you know, if schools offer it at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year, you can measure growth that way and you can sort of see how students um, develop over the course of the year. It can also be used as a summative assessment if it's given just in the spring. Um, it is also being used more and more as a high school placement assessment, especially after COVID, where a lot of Catholic schools saw an influx of students coming from public schools or charters um, or other, other um, Catholic schools, uh, you know, switching to classical, things like that. Uh, so, you know, you had students coming from all over um, all, all different educational backgrounds and, and high schools were offering um, CLTA to sort of get a baseline of where, where their students coming in are at, where their freshmen are at. Um, so that's been very helpful. Uh, all of our assessments are norm referenced uh, and for the CLTA, we're doing a study this May as well to add lexiles and quantiles um, to the assessment as an additional resource um, and information um, for our, our families. And uh, I will touch on Lex in a little bit because uh, we're including those in the CLT three through six assessments um, as well. 
And then we have the CLT-10. It's designed for ninth and 10th grade. It's also formative and summative. The unique part about the CLT-10 is that top sophomore scorers are eligible for national student awards. So these are $2,500 scholarships. So this is similar to the national merit system that's set up with the college board. Uh, you know, we had families that love CLT. They love their content. They love our mission. They love our, our you know, um, that we aren't censoring the Christian and Catholic intellectual tradition, um, which is really important. And, um, but they say, but we want the scholarships. We, we want to make sure that our students are taken care of for college. And we definitely understand that that, um, that, that is what it, is on the minds of parents. So one of the things that we've done is, is our national student awards, which gives the exact same, you know, amount that the national merit award offers. It's same amount, $2,500, but our award um, is applicable to our partner colleges, which are Catholic liberal arts colleges. Um, we are also expanding um, to, uh, to Christian colleges to, um, you know, even we've had conversations with MIT, we've had conversations with some state colleges. So we're just continuing to get more and more momentum and growth. And colleges are seeing that, frankly, the SAT and ACT is no longer really a good um, assessment and a good reflection of, of a student's intellectual life. So, you know, that we are constantly gaining more and more partner colleges. Um, and that scholarship is applicable to any of the colleges we partner with. And that list is on our website. Um, and then the CLT is our flagship assessment. It is the assessment that um, many, many people know us by. It's designed for 11th and 12th grade. Um, it is formative and summative, and it is norm reference, and it is our college entrance exam, of course. Okay, so what is the need for a new standardized assessment? Um, so the current assessments on the market are not tailored to classic education principles. They focus on current trends, they focus on informational texts, their content um, is typically laced with modern ideologies that families do not want their students exposed to. Um, and they often are opposed to great ideas that have stood the test of time. Um, also, a new assessment specifically designed for students receiving a classic education grounded in virtue and human formation provides information about student progress and feedback uh, that families want to know about. Um, and, and I'll touch a little bit more about what makes us unique in that regard on the next slide. Uh, the goal of CLT assessments is to identify the common ground between all the various curricula used in classical schools across the country, faith-based schools, homeschool, um, you know, homeschool curriculums, and other content-rich schooling environments. So we are taking the best from all of these and, and, um, and creating an assessment um, that works for everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. I, not the, I promised uh, I would touch on the other one in the next slide, but it, I think I'm touching on it uh, in a later slide. Um, but let's talk about our CLT three through six assessments. So these three curriculum that you see here uh, focus uh, on the trivium by Sister Miriam Joseph, Core Knowledge by Edie Hirsch and Singapore Math. This was our starting point for our skills that we're assessing on the CLT three through six. This does not mean this is our ending point, but this is what our, our test development team used to sort of gain some inspiration just to, just to start um, building the skills that we have on our CLT three through six assessments. Um, and then we, uh, we brought in teachers, 10 teachers for each grade level from our most trusted and longest, longest established uh, partner schools. And we brought in those educators, they brought their curriculums, um, and we, uh, we came together and they essentially audited that, that initial draft of skills. Uh, and they added things that they wanted to see on the assessment that were in their curriculums, in their classical curriculums. Uh, and they took things off that they thought weren't, um, weren't relevant. One of the things that I remember, because I was in the fifth grade um, group, I, I have taught fifth grade in Catholic classical um, schools before. Um, so I, I got to be a part of that uh, in the fifth grade group and, and just sort of contribute and observe. And uh, it was really great. It was really cool to watch all the teachers come together and collaborate and, and really like be 
very um, thoughtful about the language of our skills, about what terms we're using for, for different grammar, um, parts of speech, for example, because uh, different curriculum use different terms. Um, but, you know, the, one of the things that came to my mind of, of something that was removed uh, was um, uh, in the verbal reasoning section, we had uh, tone as one of the thing, one of the skills and almost all the teachers, myself included, looked at that and said, you know, that's it's more of a modern, um, you know, skill that that our curriculum doesn't doesn't really cover. Um, and, and so we we, you know, contributed collectively and, and everybody sort of agreed, OK, maybe this isn't the best uh, skill to include for for that grade level. Um, so we removed that. Uh, and there were other there were other um, skills that that we um, we caught and thought, you know, OK, that's not really uh, that's not really pertinent to the education that, you know, is, is common in the schools that we serve. Um, so uh, this is really an assessment and all of our assessments are really assessments built by the classical renewal movement for the classical renewal movement, which I think is is wonderful um, that it, it's collaborative in that way. OK, here's the slide I was referencing earlier. So so what makes us unique? Uh, the first thing that makes us unique is that uh, we our assessments uh, strive to measure both achievement and aptitude. This is incredibly unique, especially uh, for our upper grade assessments, um, but also everything is trickling down to the lower lower grades as well. So achievement is really what a student knows, what they what uh, what they can remember, what they what skills um, they are, um, you know, showing mastery of, and aptitude is really how that student thinks. Now, College Board for sure, ever since 2015, has completely uh, discarded aptitude. They aligned with the Common Core state standards in 2015, and since then, the the SAT and ACT have been purely achievement based assessments. They are purely focused on ticking off the boxes of what the skill, you know, the common core standard skills that uh, that have been um, laid out um, for students to know. Uh, so they're no longer concerned with with logic. They're not concerned with with um, aptitude, with how students are thinking. And we want to bring that back. We really want an assessment that measures both because we think that that gives a more holistic view of the human person, of the intellect, and, and of, of student. So we promote holistic, not utilitarian education. We really want um, schools to, again, like I said earlier, look at our assessment as one tool in the toolbox. It's not the end all be all of a student. It's just one insight into their intellectual formation and their intellectual life. Um, we promote classical literature that has withstood the test of time. We do not have uh, we do not rely heavily on modern texts. We also don't rely on informational texts. We don't have informational texts on our assessments. We rely heavily on primary sources. We want to expose students to the great conversation of the Western tradition. So in the older grades, that, that's what in the classical world we refer to as the great books. Um, for, for the little ones, that's really we're getting into the good books, good classic literature um, that your students are already reading, um, likely reading in class and at home. Um, so those are that's the content we want. We want our um, our young students to be um, exposed to Charlotte's Web, uh, Black Beauty, um, the Wind in the Willows, um, uh, the, where the red fern grows. Right, all this beautiful these beautiful timeless pieces of literature um, that your students already already likely know and love. Uh, that's the type of content we want. Aesop's fables. We want fairy tales. We want myths. Um, that's what that's what's going on the the CLT assessments, um, which is staunchly different than than many of the other assessments on the market um, and their their content. Um, we also have flexible testing times for the for the little ones. So what we're doing for the CLT three through six is we are giving schools um, and, and Regina Chaley and all of the centers um, in the network as well. Everybody's getting a month window um, 
to administer the assessment. They can administer it any day that works for the school schedule, and they can also break it up. You know, if, if it's best for a student to, you know, to have shorter testing times, um, they could do uh, each one part a day over the course of four days. Um, and it, so we don't want it to be this chore that students feel uh, it's a grueling, you know, time intensive assessment. We also know that students don't always have the attention. I mean, the, the, the little ones don't have the attention to sit through uh, a very, very long assessment. They, they belong in the classroom with their teachers. Uh, so we're really mindful of that and trying to, uh, trying to make short testing times and also flexible testing times so that the schools who know their students best and families that know their students best can uh, can administer it in, in the way they see fit. Um, and we also honor the principle of subsidiarity for accommodations. So for the little ones, uh, for older students, we require for the CLT 10 and CLT, we, we require an accommodations application. But for CLT 8 and below, we are not requiring applications for accommodations. That's going to be up to the school to decide um, what, uh, what students need. They, they know their students best. They know what IEPs or what, um, what challenges they have, what learning challenges. So they know what's best, best for them. Um, and something that's, of course, very, very important to me and, and all of you, I'm sure, is that, that this assessment and CLT complements a Catholic education. It doesn't compromise it. Uh, we, like I mentioned earlier, are not censoring the Catholic intellectual tradition. We're, in fact, uh, incorporating it and infusing it into these assessments um, and trying to, you know, on our older, um, for our older students on the author bank, we have at least 15 saints on the author bank, all the way back from the early church fathers um, through, uh, through, the, um, through the medieval period, through the Baroque period, and uh, we really want to highlight the best of what's been thought, written, and said. And of course, as Catholics, we understand that some of the best that's been thought, written, and said is by our, in our own patrimony, in our own church history, of course, by our saints and our popes and our doctors of the church. So CLT actually recognizes that. And, and, um, and we're also run by a lot of Catholics. Our founders are Catholic and See, you know, all of our leadership are, are um, a lot of our leadership are Catholics, and many of us that work here are Catholics. So, of course, we we bring that into everything we do. Um, and then something that I think is very important and that makes CLT unique is that we make beautiful, beautiful assessments. Um, we try on. I'll show you a sample, but we try to include beautiful imagery, beautiful content. Um, simple and beautiful design um, that's not cluttered and distracting. Uh, and, and I think that goes a long way, especially with students that might already be nervous in the test taking process. It's really calming and relaxing and, and uh, for them to see, you know, pictures on the test that they, that they really love and, you know, of their favorite characters, their favorite book characters or uh, the, the content that they really love. Um, so we don't want students to be feel like test taking is an anxious, um, anxiety provoking process, but I think that makes us unique. Okay, so what is on our assessments? So we have uh, two categories we are assessing. We have verbal reasoning and quantitative reasoning, uh, two sections for each. So on the verbal reasoning, we are assessing grammar, parts of speech, sentence structure and diagramming, analysis, reading comprehension, and writing concepts and skills. Um, and uh, I will show you a little um, framework for what percentages um, uh, we are allocating to each of those in, in just a second. And then for the quantitative reasoning, we are assessing arithmetic and operations, geometrical reasoning, and mathematical reasoning. So notice we have a, a, a big emphasis on the logic component um, of, of um, learning, uh, which is very important in the classical tradition. Okay, so here is that content framework. Um, so this is going to look very similar. Um, this is for grade three. Um, but this will look very similar for grades four, five, and six. It's just going to change the percentages of what we um, what we emphasize. They're going to change a little bit depending on what's grade level appropriate. 
Um, so, you know, we have orthography, parts of speech, and sentence structure and diagramming for our first verbal reasoning section. For our reading comprehension and writing section, we have analysis, reading comprehension, and writing concepts and skills. And then for the math content and reasoning skills, we have the same three categories. Um, they're just spread out um, across um, two sections. Okay, I want to share, a, uh, show you a sample. I always think it's better uh, to, to uh, show than mm -hmm. tell sometimes. Uh, so let me share this tab here. Let me just make sure everybody can see that. Okay, I think mm -hmm. we can all see that. So this is our sample test um, that we are very excited to, to show off because it's so beautiful. Um, so I'll just scroll through so you can get an idea. So again, we try to make our assessments beautiful and uh, simple for students to understand and to read. So this is our, would be you know, an example of a literature passage from Charlotte's Web. Um, we break it down into paragraphs. and include pictures. And then of course, questions, speech, diction, phonics with syllables and tongue, uh, different, different parts of speech questions. Um, so, we also have poetry as well. Uh, this is um, a poem called the, uh, the Pleiades by Amy Lowell. So we include poetry on the assessments. We also include um, fairy tales and fables, historical profiles. This is a historical profile about Zeno, the Greek teacher of wisdom. And we always include Nice pictures for students. A lot of the students, surprisingly, uh, they, at least for our upper grades, and I suspect it'll be the same with our lower grade students, uh, we get student feedback. They, they, we even get handwritten letters at CLT about, you know, older students saying, you know, I actually liked taking your, your tests. Um, and you don't always hear that from students. Uh, so yeah. that makes us kind of gives us the impression that we're on the right track. Um, so this would be our second verbal reasoning section. This is a passage from The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald. Love George MacDonald. And we also have arts and music uh, passages. So this is a passage about Raphael um, and it gives a little bit of a, uh, an overview of his life and his accomplishments, um, ask some content questions, um, and then gives a photo there of the School of Athens. And then for quantitative, we can skip down below. Um, first of all, I love that you have the violin in the background as music is a uh, part of the quadrivium of, of the mathematical arts. So we definitely um, keep it true to the classical tradition. Um, you know, what is the name of the shape? We get into shapes, we get into uh, basic arithmetic questions, geometry questions. So yeah, this gives you a little bit of an insight into what your students will be seeing when they take when they take the CLT three through six. So I'll go back. Okay, so what will, will you get back on the score report? Um, so we, on our, on our score report, at least for the pilot, for the CLT three through six, we are going to have scores. You'll get your students' verbal reasoning and quantitative reasoning score. Uh, it will be broken out by fundamental and secondary skills. So that just means fundamentals are the skills that every student, sh every student should have mastered um, by that grade level. And then secondary skills are, are more advanced um, skills for that grade level. Uh, you'll get um, academic and reasoning skills. So that goes a little bit back more to the achievement aptitude um, difference. You'll get raw scores and percent correct. 
you'll also get CLT user percentiles and stay nines. The user percentiles are very valuable um, for your students because uh, because when you're any other assessment on the market, they they're marketing and and appealing and uh, they're being used by uh, all the public schools, all the charter schools, um, and. And so when you're getting a national percentile, it's not always an apples to apples comparison of how your student is doing in uh, comparison to the students that are getting a same or similar education. So the CLT user percentile is really valuable because it's gonna give you an insight into, you know, how your student's doing compared to other Catholic schools, uh, Catholic school students or, or homeschool students, classical homeschool students um, and, and um, and schools like that. So we're, you're gonna get a better understanding of where your student's at. And then you'll also get a Lexile and a Quantile for your student. So the Lexile is your student's reading level and the Quantile will be their math level. Um, and I will give you a little more information as we go um, on that. So this is um, a sample of what you're gonna see on your score report. So you'll get a, um, a graph here showing how your student performs compared to the average. Uh, you will get um, their verbal reasoning score, their quantitative score. On that first page at the bottom, you'll get their lexile and quantile. Um, and it will also give a user percentile for that. So you'll see, okay, in, in you know, verbal reasoning, in, in sort of the literature and reading um, and grammar side of things, um, here's, how my student is doing um, compared to a, compared to the national average. So that's going to be a national percentile there. Um, and then you'll get the quantile. So you see, okay, on a national level, here's the percentile that my student's at for math. Um, and you'll also get their, their quantile score, which will tell you what level, what grade level they're at for math. And that's a national um, data point. And then, like I mentioned, you'll get fundamentals. Uh, you'll get for each section, you'll get their um, fundamentals their, and their secondary um, score um, for verbal reasoning and for quantitative reasoning um, and total. Um, and then also on the right, you'll see the green and yellow boxes. So these are stainines. So essentially what stainines are is they, they they distill um, the average score that your student gets to a scale of, of um, one through nine. So one to three is poor performance, uh, four to six is average performance, and seven to nine is, is very good performance. Um, so it just sort of gives you like a, an easier touch point for, okay, here's how my student's doing, red, yellow, green um, type of thing. Um, and it's just st statistically, uh, statistically um, measured out to, to those three categories. Um, so it just gives you an extra little snapshot there. And then you'll get scaled scores, um, as well as a, an in-depth analysis on the specific question types. So you'll see, okay, so here's how my student's doing in orthography. Here's what they got right. Here's you know the number uh, that they got wrong um, and their percent correct and their stay nine for each, each um, sub question type. So that's really helpful to kind of see exactly where the issue is. If there is an issue, here's you know, exactly the, the topic that, that you know, my student might need some extra help on. Um, this is something I'm really excited about that we have put together. So we have put together a Lexile book list. So Lexiles and Quantiles were created by this company called Metametrics. Um, and they are a psychometric um, statistic, statistics and data company that, um, that created these two data points to help um, students understand their reading level and their math level. Um, now, on their website, you can put in your student's Lexile score, and it will give you thousands of books, you know, and they're all over the place. They're modern books, they're classics, they're everything in between. And so we have taken we've gone on their website and for each grade level uh in, in lexile score range we have distilled and pulled out kind of the best of what's on their website um and and a lot of the good 
classic literature um, that your students would likely be interested in. And we've just put it in a little book list and a guide um, for families and for schools to use, um, just so it's a little bit it's a little bit more helpful. You don't have to navigate and sift through all the books on their website, um, even though they have many, many, many classic books on there. Um, we've just kind of pulled them out and made it easier. Um, so we have it for second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh and eighth. Okay, and a few final thoughts uh, about preparing for CLT assessments. I get this question a lot. How, how will my student prepare um, for, for the CLT or CLT 10 or CLT 8? I'm assuming you might be thinking the same thing about CLT 3 through 6. And you know, the answer that we have at CLT to that, um, it, it's, it, I'm just gonna say it and then I'll preface it after. So what we, our approach at CLT again is, is to provide an assessment that fits seamlessly into the life of the school. It complements it, it doesn't compromise it. And so the, the best preparation um, from our view for any of our assessments is a good education, simply. Um, I will say that we were, had a student get the first perfect score on the CLT um, last school year. They were, it was a homeschool boy and he is brilliant um, and he's being fought over by all the colleges and it's amazing to watch his journey. But he, um, essentially he just read a lot, like every homeschool student, right? And all your students are probably very, very good readers. Um, so a lot of what you're probably already doing is, is the preparation, um, reading a lot, um, you know, focusing on those fundamental skills, um, quantitative skills, those math math skills um, are really important. Um, just the basics. I mean, we're going back to the basics, reading, writing, and arithmetic, and really trying to um, hold a high standard for, for those um, for each grade level. So there's no special, you know, trick or class or um, book that I'm, I'm going to offer, um, just really a good education. And of course, that's exactly what Regina Chaley provides. Um, so you're already on the best track and doing the best thing that, that you could um, for, for um, you know, meshing well with the, with the CLT assessments. Um, so with that being said, I would love to answer any questions that you have. If you have questions for Chelsea, please be sure and put them in the chat and uh, then she'll be able to respond to them. Chelsea, I just want to say how excited I am that our Regina Chile students will actually be able to walk into the testing environment and then encounter their favorite literary passages on the test. What affirmation that will give them and what enthusiasm for learning and that we can now partner with a form of assessment that really embellishes that enthusiasm for learning is a great joy for us at Regina Chile, for all of us involved as tutors and also as parents as well. So absolutely, we're excited about that. Um, I did want to go ahead and ask you, uh, what is the benefit of RCA students taking the pilot assessments in May this year? They're going to be taking the pilot lower uh, grade assessments. And could you speak a little bit to that about the benefit of our students um, being able to take those pilot exams in May? Sure. Um, so our pilot assessments are, are very, very thoughtfully designed. Much of what the pilot is going to be is going to be nearly similar, nearly the same as what, what you'll see um, next school year when we officially launch them. Um, so the, the real purpose of the pilot is to get our assessments norm referenced um, so that, that, you know, homeschool families that are in states that require a standardized test, um, a nationally normed norm reference standardized test so that that can qualify um, for their, their um, you know, their state's requirements. Uh, so it really what we're what we need to do this this May is to um, do those studies uh, to do the Lexile and Quantile studies. Um, but as far as the content and and the value um, and everything I've mentioned here, that that is really the, the reason in, in and of itself is is to get a good reflection on your students intellectual progress. And the pilot's going to provide that um, for you, for all of you as and all of your students. 
That's great. Thank you. Uh, here's a question from a listener. Do students answer the questions directly on the booklet or will they use the Scantron? So they will use a Scantron um, and it's just classic bubble in um, uh, format. Now for older students, we have a writing portion on the online assessment that students can do um, for the CLT. If they're applying to colleges, they can do, a, um, they can do an optional essay. Uh, it's just to give colleges a writing sample um, if they would like to do that. Um, but for all of our other assessments, it's it's just the the bubble in um, bubble in the answers. But they can circle, you know, and, and they can write all over the booklet. They can take notes in the margins. Of course, that's encouraged by by all of our teachers. They you know encourage students to to use that booklet to to the fullest extent. They can underline things. They can use all of their um, all of their strategies that they learn in, in, in school, in class. And I do want to clarify for parents that if you go to the CLT website, then you'll see that there are options uh, to take CLT assessments online. But all our students at Regina Chile will all be taking them uh, on paper using the Scantrons, as Chelsea just described, at the Regina Chile Center. Yes, thank you for clarifying that, Katrina. So we only offer paper for schools. Um, we have two types of test takers. We have what we call direct to consumer test takers. So these are, you know, homeschool families that just want to sign their child up um, for testing independently and the parent wants to proctor it and pay for it and all that. Um, and then we have um, in school test takers. And for the online or for the direct to consumer at home test takers, we only offer online. For schools, we offer the option of paper and online. And for our lower grade assessments, we're only starting with paper. Um, because the little ones, it's just it's just a more holistic, you know, um, fitting uh, format for them. It's not overstimulating. They don't rush through as much. Uh, with the online, we find students will can just click through and and rush. And so we want them to have the most uh, the least stressful environment, the most natural environment um, for for the test taking process as we can. So um, it's just paper um, for for our schools and for the pilot. That's great. And I find that too that students when they're using a pencil and needing to actually use their body to write, that it really helps make those neural connections and helps them to think through uh, what they're trying to respond to. Um, we have a parent asking, uh, can the Lexile book list be available to families before next year? Is there a benefit uh, to them accessing that? Mm. Yes, uh, yes, I can definitely send that um, to you, Katrina, and, and maybe there's a way we can make that available um, to all the Regina Chaley families uh, through an email or um, a portal, whatever you guys um, do. Uh, yeah, we can definitely get that to, to all of you, for sure. Um, this question is, uh, were there any RCA parents or staff who helped pilot the grade level tests? So I just wanna clarify that our students at Regina Chaley are taking the pilot tests, which are offered for the first time in May. So that will be the beginning of the, the offering of the pilot tests. Um, and as Chelsea described, that those will help provide analytics for a, ahead of them taking the actual assessments next year. Was there anything you wanted to add to that, Chelsea? Um, yeah, so so we, um, we for the development, uh, or who, okay, were there any RCA parent staff who helped pilot? Oh, I think you answered it, Katrina. Yeah, so the pilot is this May. Um, so all of the Regina Chaley centers will be will be participating in that pilot. So I'm excited to get your feedback. Um, excited to hear what all of you think about it. And um, it's a very, very needed as, uh, assessment um, right now for, for families and for schools. So we're, we're happy to be um, providing something that schools are really looking forward to having. And when once the students take those pilot tests in May, then uh, is, is it correct that then the parents will be able to uh, see their students' scores through the online CLT portal? And then next year, they'll be able to see how their child improved or how their score changed from the previous year. Is that correct? So the scores will be um, given in a, uh, I'm not sure if they'll be given in a PDF um, for the pilot because we're still building the tech infrastructure for the for the student portal for the lower grade assessments. So this is just gonna, the pilot 
period, we're going to be giving back a, a score report for each individual student. Um, and next year, we will have a, a portal that's, that families will be able to track their students' progress over time. Um, but that won't be that portal won't be available um, just yet for the pilot this May. That's fantastic because that does mean that over time, our Virginia Chile families, our parents will be able to log in with their username to their CLT mm -hmm. portal through the years their child takes these exams at Virginia Chile and then be able to see uh, their development over the years. So that's very exciting and will be a new uh, opportunity for our families. Um, how quickly will parents receive the grades um, from the assessments in May? Do you have any uh, estimation on that at this point? That's a good question. So it's going to take our team a little bit um, since this is the first time that we are um, we are offering four, four extra grade levels of assessments. Um, so I don't think we have a definitive date or date range that we're shooting for quite yet, but it might take a little longer than typical um, of a CLT test administration, which it, for online is a week and for on paper, it's a month um, to get results back. So it's gonna take a little bit longer than that, but um, it, it's definitely gonna be worth it um, to get these these assessments up and running. And, uh, and are, do only Catholic and Christian colleges accept CLT test scores, or are there other universities and colleges interested in the CLT? No, so there's there's many colleges that are becoming increasingly excited and interested about the CLT. Um, a couple of the ones I mentioned um, that we've had repeated um, conversations with um, MIT, some of the other some of the Ivy Leagues um, we've talked to. Because uh, I, th I think the, the struggle that the, that the colleges are having, especially after COVID, where a lot of them went test optional, is that they're, getting, they're not really getting a good idea of what students, how students are, are coming in on campus. Um, they're not getting a good understanding of what type of student they're getting. And, you know, when you make it test optional and you open the doors wide open, they're finding that a lot of students are dropping out after the first year. They're not prepared for the rigor of, of college. Um, they're not contributing positively on campus. So they want an assessment that can bring students on campus, can attract students to their campus, that they can get a good feel for, for how they're going to be able to handle um, college life and, and um, the rigor of the the academics there. Um, and so CLT has that high standard. Um, you know, over time, SAT has slowly, and ACT has slowly taken things off the assessment that were deemed too rigorous or, um, you know, or, um, well, yeah, it's just too too rigorous for, for students. So they've taken a lot of grammar off the test. They've taken a lot of um, more uh, obviously the logic and reasoning off the test. Um, and so these things are really sort of watering down the standard um, of these standardized assessments. So CLT is really in the game to, to ha you know, to raise the bar and to create a new standard of education. And, and the colleges are really noticing that and, and looking for that. So we, ha we do have, I mean, if you go on the Newman guide list, every single one of the Newman Guy Colleges partners with CLT. Many, many Christian um, colleges partner with CLT. Liberal Arts Colleges partner with CLT, some of the best in the country. Um, and, and But then we're also branching out um, as well. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, we, we have partnerships with uh, organizations that are promoting these other, other colleges, a wider variety of colleges. Um, so like, for example, with that CLT 10 national award, that $2,500 uh, student award that I mentioned for high, high scores on the CLT 10, that actually can be applied not only to our partner colleges, but it can be applied to any ACTA, A or B um, college and university. So ACTA is the American Council of Trustees and Alumni. And we had a partnership starting this year with them where students can uh, take that to any ACTA A or B school. And that's many state colleges, military um, colleges as well. Um, so there's a wider variety that's that we're we're partnering with. Um, we're starting to to partner with many other other colleges as well. 
Thank you so much. That's just wonderful information. Thank you for taking the time, Chelsea, to share this information with all of us at Regina Chile uh, regarding the classic learning test lower grade assessments. Uh, just to remind you all, Chelsea presented a webinar on the CLT high school level assessments in the fall for Regina Chile families. So be sure to listen to that. You can find that in the RCA YouTube channel. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And I hope you all have a good have a good night. God bless you. Thank you so much.